That's good. Man, you guys are <laughs> I mean, leaving me hanging. It's no, like no a confidence of the second off. Like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, that's that's me too. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> One, two, three. Mm. Let's, <laughs> let's do, let's do it again. Let's do it again. It kind of it, yeah. One, two, three. One more time. Oh my oh god. My. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Pursuing Pixels. This is episode number 72 and my name is Kevin Portelli and I'm here tonight with Randall Nolery. Hey everybody. John Hines. Hi there. And DJ Mandolini. Yo. And we got Full House back again tonight and guess what guys? Hmm. Gonna talk some video oh, games. Oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> whether, whether we like it or not. Refresh. Or whether you like it or not. But uh, <laughs> yeah, DJ, I know we uh, when you were rattling off last week your uh, massive list of all the games you've completed, I, I wanted to hear, have your thoughts because you and I have played, uh, and I know Randall and I have talked a little bit, and everybody probably knows what Fall Guys is all about at this point. Um, if you're unfamiliar, I don't know how you could not be. Um, but yeah, if I know you've been playing a ton of it, you and I have played some together online, actually quite a bit. That's been the pr- yeah. you know primary uh, source of my experience. So yeah, I mean, you've probably covered a lot of what I have to say. I mean, I was very interested. Like at first, uh, this might be a maybe a shorter conversation because I feel like my interest has like plummeted a lot recently. Actually. Um, those were you, my, def- those were the thoughts I was going to share. So uh, I was going to say your interest plummeted because you have no more worlds to conquer right. because you kept winning. So right. I mean, yeah, but when DJ and I would play and I'm sure I mentioned this when we talked about it before, but yeah, he'd win like three matches in a row, Which is like just, just crowns in a row. I, just, I was like, oh man, there's only one trophy I have yet to get. And that's win five <laughs> matches in a row. <laughs> <laughs> which I don't think I'll ever do. Um, do they post percentages of like what people have gotten trophies or is yes. that more of a like your, your KD ratio basically? Yeah. They, like, what they, is the, the percentage of people who got that trophy? I think it's uh last time I checked, I think it was like 0.2%. It has people. to be Jesus. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. Lord. Cause there's so many, ma- there's so many uh, games that kind of depend they're team based, you know? So you're there. It's just very hard to pull off five in a row. Yeah. Right. Which like, I think that's something I'm looking forward to them changing. If they do is like kind of breaking up the solo and team games into maybe different like modes or I, I don't know, like some way we're, you know, you can have maybe like an all solo run or something like that. I yeah. Know. And I know we talked about how that would maybe like potentially split up the user bait. Like it would be a cool in theory, but maybe it would split up. I know they have so many people playing right now, so it'd probably be OK for the time being. But if you have like, oh, I want to play these single like, you know what I mean? You wouldn't it'd be tougher to get like 60 players yeah. all in a match. A lot of battle royales are basically like solo, though, that way. I think they yep. could pull it off. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I just meant if you're like splitting it up into people like picking oh i want to play the only solo mode and i want to play the only team mode and I, like yeah, you'd, you'd be divvying up the entire base into like multiple groups that's fair i still think there's plenty of people playing but that just something sense. over time could maybe if, if we're already talking about being burned out on the game a little bit right yeah i i do think the risk would be not enough people doing the team games but right. maybe that yeah. should clue them in that the team games aren't as good maybe yeah Yeah. but although i will say you know when i'm booting it up i'm kind of just playing like mostly to play with you or with somebody else to like kind of for the goofy like if i'm ever going to play it again it's definitely going to be with friends i i just don't even with there's a new update coming out in october shortly around the time this episode's coming out um but yeah i think I still don't really see myself having a draw to come back. My PlayStation Plus subscription expires pretty soon, and Uh-oh. I think I might just let it let it burn. You keep saying that. I, I've already you make canceled. that if threat. I, if you I gotta no, I've already canceled it. it. If I if I don't if I don't change what I've selected, it will not re. Uh, I've canceled after. my card. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I have it where it won't renew right now, but I can change it technically before. Yeah the middle of the month you got time <laughs> yeah. yeah but I, I really i really don't think i'm going to yeah I'm, I'm definitely in the same boat like i would need to play this with friends or wait until some new maps are released or something yeah um, yeah especially because like sounds like they're going to do 
like I've won over 30 times. I don't think there's really. <laughs> Whoa, wow. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah i have not won once Me probably because i'm playing with dj every time that's right well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that kind of lowers your odds automatically at that point yeah yeah well i guess we can keep the fall guys conversation pretty short i, yeah, I guess yeah i was, I was super hyped on this one even yeah i was, I was super hyped on this knockout. one what's that that's what i always bring to the tables redeeming the full name of this game which is fall guys ultimate knockout that's right that's right <laughs> Um, well, a couple of games that I wanted to talk about real quick. Uh, there was actually, I had a recent back and forth with uh, the developer on Twitter of this game called Spear, which is spelled uh, S P E E R, and it actually has like brackets around it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I saw like a post about a goofy movie, which is one of my favorite Disney movies. And I was just like, oh, I was like, and then I, as after I responded to it, I was like, this name sounds kind of familiar. What? And I was like, oh, you know what? I remember playing this game Spear, and I'm pretty sure this is the developer. And nice. sure enough, it was. Was. And uh, it's a, an awesome. I love this game. I, I did it. It was one of the earlier. It was part of the Itchio bundle for racial justice and equality that we've mentioned numerous times on many episodes yeah. here. But uh, it's like a very. It's got like a the like super eight bit retro style. It's a s- side scrolling platformer, but like single screen stages. Nice. And essentially, the whole you can throw your spear and it sticks into the wall. And then when it sticks into the wall, you can jump on it as yes. a platform and you don't have to recollect it. But yes, as soon as please. you throw another spear, it uh, it the one that you're standing on will disappear. So you're doing a lot of like to Ooh. climb up a wall. You got to like jump, throw a spear while you're on the, you know, upswing of your jump, then land, then jump, throw it again. while you're you know what I mean? You got to kind of climb it. up. But then it starts getting super tricky, and it's got the graphics like with the eight bit styles, like very Sega Master System. I'm into it. It's it's very like Alex Kid vibes. All right. Um, but the spear also like if you throw like these, even though they're single screen levels, they're decent amount. Like you're doing a decent amount of platforming and jumping over spikes and all this kind of stuff, and you're basically just trying to get to the end goal of each level, and then each level has an optional uh, collectible if you want to go for like the extra challenge kind of thing, and there's 100 levels, uh, four worlds of 25 levels each, and like I like the more, re- I got to world two, and I'm like, now I'm having to like throw my spear to pop a balloon that has like a, a, a bundle of like TNT hanging from it that I knock down so mm. that I can throw my spear into that to blow it up, or I can like hit the spear into the like instead of hitting the balloon to pop it i'll hit the tnt and it'll carry it into like a wooden wall to explode it yeah. uh there's just so many cool mechanics you're like throwing uh to hit switches and stuff and i, I don't think i finished this thought before but since the levels aren't like they're single screen but they're a decent distance to cover so that the spear has like just a slight arc to it like you you throw it, it if you're throwing a short range it looks like you just throw it directly straight but if you're throwing it all the way across the screen it definitely has like it dips slowly as it gets like further along so okay. you've got to kind of like like cave blazers a little bit like it has that kind of like gravity if it's right. affected by gravity just a smidge but like you have to like you know just some of the jumps you have to make to like thread the needle for the spear to hit this red switch that will make it make a platform that you can walk across and then just a really cleverly designed levels i really 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 love this game um and i it just reminded me that i gotta go back and finish it because yeah i did it as part of the 15 minutes of game series early on and i was just like oh man i really really love this game nice and yeah i just the music's great um yeah there's just nothing bad i can say about this one Awesome. So yeah, and I think we all bought that bundle. So you y'all should definitely check that one out. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, I've yet to tap into it. It's you know I've got <laughs> like my backlog of PS Plus games, and then like I don't want to even think about all these other games I now own. <laughs> well, yeah, the thousands or hundreds of others. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. Well, uh, one more game I wanted to mention real quick that I didn't plan on talking about until I finished it and played it. Uh, is a was recording a new video for 15 minutes of game, which I'll, I'll, by the time this episode comes out, I'm sure I'll have it up. But uh, it's a game called Out of Ammo, and it's a shoot 'em up uh, breakout hybrid game. Mm. And uh, so you don't, you can't actually shoot. You have like a ship that's, you know, it's kind of like a Tate mode presentation okay and you have your ship at the bottom of the screen there's like a line that you can't cross and then you can't actually shoot your ship's kind of like a it's like a space shuttle almost and it's facing backwards and then so you're not actually shooting you're actually ejecting your core 
and that's like the ball that you're bouncing off of bricks and stuff. And then there's like little enemies that you there's basically just like instead of breaking all the bricks on a level, there's like a mini boss or like a slightly bigger boss at the end of each stage. And there's just six stages. It took me only like 10, 15 minutes to beat. Jeez. Um, but it's, a, and a, you know, it's, it's not super difficult. But the other cool thing is like, so not only are you just using your ship to kind of, uh, you know, reflect the ball or deflect the ball back at the bricks or the enemies. Um, the enemies will keep respawning other than the main boss. But you also can like your, uh, I think it's called your accelerator, but like you're essentially your like exhaust. You can every like maybe five, 10 seconds that charges up and then you can fire that as like a laser beam almost like out of the back. That's why your ship is kind of faced in reverse Mm -hmm. and you're like launching your exhaust to like redirect the ball or your core that's out in play. Okay. And you can like shoot that and launch it. So like you're really having to like die. And then you're also, since you're controlling a ship, you got to dodge enemy projectiles that are getting shot at you as well. Um, but yeah, it's like just like a nice short and sweet. It's got a really great, like simple color palette. Uh, it's heavily inspired by the game Zero Ranger. If anyone's familiar with that, it's another like indie shoot 'em up. I think. Hmm. Um, I think just by like the that's just what the developer said <laughs> on the page. I think okay. even on the on the title screen of the game, I think it even said Inspiration <laughs> Zero <laughs> Ranger. Nice. And there was another game the in there too. That, but uh, like Donkey put in one of his like top of the years. So, oh, uh, I, cool. And it's, I, I know it's a shmup. So, and I know we love our shmups. Oh, most yeah. of us do. Uh, so, so I, I'm a, a very specific question I have is where is the location of the ship? Is it, it at the bottom of the screen? It's bottom of the screen, but unlike Strikey Sisters and, and a Bot Vice, you do have a little bit of vertical control. There is like a line that you can't cross, but you do, you like, you can move side to side, but you can move front to back. So, you're just not a tiny bit like dodging stuff from you're only dodging projectiles coming from the top of the from screen. the top yeah everything's okay. up it's at not the top like a yeah bullet hell in that respect okay yeah it's, and it's not yeah it's not scrolling it's kind of like a static screen okay okay um that you're just trying to clear all the or not even clear all the bricks you're just trying to actually kill the boss um and it has a great actually just like it kind of does like a scroll like a you know star wars style at the beginning of the game but it just explains all the mechanics real quick like super short and sweet um, and I, I really appreciated that, but really loved the experience. Like I was just like grinning ear to ear nice. um, and it kind of juked me a couple times where I was like, oh, it's, I think I beat it. And I was like, you know, it was just a short little maybe game jam game or something. But I think it was like the developer. I think his name is Harry Wilson. I could be wrong on that, but I'll have a link in the episode description. But uh, I think he like mentioned like on his page, like I work at a triple A studio, but otherwise I just make games that I don't finish <laughs> and then <laughs> upload them anyways. Nice. Uh, but this one still, even though it's bite sized, it's definitely definitely still to me felt like a complete experience uh it's certainly no monster boy 30 hour oh plus uh jam but we'll, <laughs> i will uh, beat that game <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i just wanted to uh rattle both those off real quick because i i just had an absolute blast with those awesome um but yeah i know uh speaking of before we recorded tonight and what i was playing i know uh john and uh dj you both were uh playing some civilization six and I know that uh, Randall and I both have this game and physical uh, form on Nintendo Switch, and we're waiting for you to convince us to play it or maybe talk us out of it. Factory well, I mean, sealed, I, baby. What? <laughs> I've unwrapped mine. <laughs> oh, what's nice? Well, I got it at GameStop. It was I, I, there was already open, but it was only fifteen <laughs> bucks, so I had to go for it. Sure. Why is it that either of you feel the need to be convinced? Because I have so many games in my backlog. We were just talking about You don't backlog, care about DJ. backlogs. Not really. <laughs> I, I, but Not they're, really. They're, for me, it, my backlog is just that they're, I, like I just mentioned, a bunch of bite-sized games. Like I, That's usually what I lean towards. Mm. And I just like, yeah. this is obviously not that. So like I really need to know, like, yeah. man, this really got me so hooked. Because I can get hooked into these kind of strategy, yep. more in-depth type things. Same. Uh, but it's it's real. I got to know that, or maybe if you guys want to play online or something, because I know that's an option as well. So like that, I would be interested in that. Maybe. Oh. oh my god! I put I put so many hours into this game, and I still am convinced that DJ would just slaughter me. Like, <laughs> the, the second that like we would encounter each other on the map, it would just be a massacre. Nah. 
Yeah, because you've talked about this a little on the podcast before, John, right? About how you like your different strategies. I think we've talked about civilization. If not, you've, we, you've talked yeah, to me the, about it. The board off game, the air, about how like your strategies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's I've, right. We talked, talked about the board game. That's I, right. I think I've talked about both the board game and the uh, actual yeah. game. Or the yeah. Yeah. Six. Because I remember some of your like play style strat. Like you talk about how you would set up the map with like the minimum amount of conflict, so you could just kind of play it almost like a city builder. You know. Yeah. Interesting. So you never go yeah, for the I'm, military strategy? <laughs> I I don't. I've uh, that's the other thing is that like I've done it a few times where oh, you don't want to like, fight. I, I don't want to fight. I like well, that's the other thing is that like in the few times that I have done it like just a straight like I haven't, you know, I I'm still kind of a wuss, so I'll put it on a very easy setting. I won't like, you know, tilt the scales too far out of my favor. <laughs> <laughs> and like the even then when I like encounter and like actually start, you know, waging war on another civilization, like as soon as you beat it or like, f- like take over the other civilization, like the game ends. And I was like, I want to keep playing. I want to just like see how far like there are so many skill trees i want to just max out every single one so you'd only play against one other civilization um one other civilization yes i i've only in the oh, in the games that i played I, <laughs> there are city states you I, I establish trade and become what sazaran is that the term for when oh you know, right right I, or I, that was the first time I had experienced that term. Oh man. (laughs) In all, well, like managing trade routes. Yeah. How have you been playing DJ? Like what's, what's your tactic when you're going into this game? Well, okay. So (laughs) my, my experience with Civ games is a bit limited. Like I played a little Civ four in college and I was just like very deep, like very deep into it, like within two weeks of playing it. And I was just like, I can't, this isn't sustainable. Like this is going to wreck <laughs> me. And I really <laughs> haven't touched it since then. There was once uh, a few years ago, I did pick up Civ five, played it for like a day. And that day I stayed up till 7 a.m. <laughs> so. <laughs> so you're almost like keeping yourself away from these games to yes as yes a, but but as there's a self-safety measure or whatever there's always been an itch and like oh, yeah. you know i tried i tried satiating that itch with some warcraft 3 the other nights and i just wasn't <laughs> that wasn't satisfying it normally it does um but yeah, I finally buckled, bought Civ Six, but I've only so I've done the tutorial because, like, you mm-hmm. know, it's been a while, and like, there is a lot to the game. Uh, so oh, yeah. I'm not gonna like sugarcoat that there there's a lot to this game. But I think yeah. the tutorial yeah. does a good job of walking you through all those parts. Um, How long is the tutorial? Over an hour for me. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's okay. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I, I can mean, live for with that. Like that. I that's mean, fair. it's if it's, it's kind, kind of walking like, you through and building it up proper, you know, in a nice progression and stuff. Yeah, like it explains things to a point, and then it's like, okay, if like you want to just finish this off and defeat the enemy, you can. But like, it, there's a point where they stop explaining, and you're just carrying okay. it on till the end. Um, okay. Cool. Cool. So. Uh, I did that. I uh, I've played one like game against AIs, um, which may have been my first ever victory in this game. Uh, I I colonized Mars. Uh, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> the science victory. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I've actually been spending a good amount of time on the scenarios section, which there are mm. only four scenarios that they offer. Uh, I'm on the third right now, but they've got like starts out with like Alexander the Great. And it's like a purely military like you have to defeat all these cities within this many turns. So, oh boy. yeah. OK. Um, and then like there's another one where you're like Poland and like defending against like so many like ottoman uh armies um you're just trying to outlast for a certain amount of turns um Mm -hmm. and right now i'm on like this australian like exploration one where there's no Mm -hmm. no fighting at all but it's all about like you're trying to raise your economy (laughs) to like (laughs) you want to raise your economy to like a certain like uh income level 
by the end of so many turns. And you're talking my language there. John's exploding. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited for Dude, that. I'm, I am struggling with this. I mean, I, I, I must be like missing something fundamental, but like, I don't know. I'm playing on. Uh, How are your roads? How are your traders? <laughs> the, the, what I'm doing now is pretty good. I've, I'm, I'm <laughs> figuring trade out. Uh, I was completely wrong in my one of my assumptions regarding trade. Uh, mm-hmm. So, like, you know, when you pick your routes, it's like, you know, certain amount of resources that you'd get and then, like, the time span. Um, mm-hmm. I thought that it was after that time span happens, then you get... Uh, Those resources. Yes, but in reality, it is... During that time span, you get those resources. Yes. So I had been Correct. severely undervaluing trade. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> um, That's why you got to keep making traders, keep getting more routes. Yeah. But so I'll say that, like, you know, although the tutorial does a good job, there are a lot of elements like that that aren't clear that you're just going to have to discover while playing the game. But it's not a- like... 100%. Yeah. It doesn't, like, wreck your experience, though. Yeah. Like, it, it is it is such a deep game in that there are so many like different aspects of it that like I will forget about them as I'm doing like a, just a, like a normal scenario against an AI like without like doing one of the like preset ones like I'll be like midway through something and I'm like ah shit I haven't upgraded my religion at all <laughs> like <laughs> I've just been ignoring that or like I've been focusing too much on production of units and I haven't been like like building up the like walls around my city or developing like using builders to like gather different types of resources yeah i've uh i've been trying to pay more attention to the different types of improvements that like builders can make and like the different yields from different tiles like i would i just would gloss over that stuff and be like oh the person can build something here cool um Mm -hmm. but it's there is like more to like maximizing your yields and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm getting, I, I think these scenarios do a good job because like, you know, that Alexander the great one, like you're just focused on military stuff. So like, it's, it, you know, it, it's good to teach you more about that. And like with this Australian one, which it, the interesting thing is that you have all these different yields you can get, but you don't have your standard builder unit that can build like improvements everywhere. You have specific mm-hmm. types of builders for specific things. You have like farmers, you have fishers, you have uh, prospectors. Yes. You have, <laughs> yeah. This is, this game's turn based, right? It's not real yes. time. It is it is okay. turn based? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. I was like, it this is, is already it this is sounded based, over my head. But like your turns go very quickly because it's automated like you are you will start a project that like when you uh, as you build more cities like the timer that it takes to build more things uh, kind of grows exponentially so that you can't just like keep pumping things out like by the time you reach your fourth city you are routinely getting things that will take 90 turns to complete Mm, jesus yeah it's and like that seems like a long time but like turns happen relatively quickly, like because the every all the com- like computations are happening internally in the game. Yeah, yeah you uh, neither of you to... have the DLC, do you? No. Mm-mm. There's a couple DLC packs. I know one adds in like global warming and all kinds of like natural disasters and weather, and I forget what the second one adds. But there's there's a couple pretty bit like it's like a fifty dollar expansion pack if you get both of them. So it's a pretty substantial addition to the game too. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I got to get a better handle on what what's yeah, the base content before I get into any of that. Sheesh. I need to like, I've, play I've a spent multiplayer dozens game. of hours. Yeah. And I'm also, I would also need like <laughs> some time before I feel comfortable complicating the process. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, what do you think, Randall? Are you sold? Are you going to be unwrapping that uh, physical copy? Yeah, I might. I'd, I'd probably be more John's route of pacifism and infrastructure than uh, anything oh, I, else. But <laughs> yeah. I give you the hookup on what my my setup is. Yeah. The different scenarios are definitely what sounds kind of interesting to me, in all honesty. Um, like that, I, I like those kind of almost like I don't know if they feel puzzly at all, but just kind of like, oh, you have to kind of 
do something specific. Like, I don't know. You maybe have to get a little more specific with your strategy. In, in yeah. a way they are, you, you do have to like approach them in uh, clever ways, especially because like by how much the difficulty ramps up um, as, as you increase the difficulties, it is very significant. Um, like the, the Australian one I'm doing right now, by the end, I need to obtain an income of uh, 600 gold per turn. Which is Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have no frame of reference for that, but obviously uh, John knows that's a lot of dough. Yeah, like you can buy like monuments and stuff for like two hundred. You have to do mm. that within sixty turns. <laughs> okay. Jeez. Okay. All right. Well, uh I think we could pretty much wrap up the Civ conversation there until we uh maybe some other of us dive into it as well. Please. That's until right. we all get in a four player game Dude. together. <laughs> I, I would be interested in trying that, although I, I would have to too. obviously play that tutorial. So Yeah. Well, John, you were saying that uh like, you know, it kinda chugs a bit <laughs> with your uh yes. switch, like it gets hot. On switch. Like, <laughs> is it like laggy though, or is it just like um work it it's it's that off. like jet engine <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like you can just you can just hear it okay um I, I i actually think like i uh there have been some updates since i last uh played it and i think it runs a little bit smoother but i think it <laughs> it's still absolutely like chugs the later you get into the game and the more mechanics you get once you like unlock flight oh. like <laughs> you're in dangerous territory there yeah like i i'm noticing you know a lot of time after i click the you know end turn button but i think that's just that there's so many things happening on the map not necessarily yeah. that i'm lagging it's just yeah also, yeah, when, once you end your turn, that's the computer, like, doing their turn. So there's probably a lot happening on that end, too. Because mm -hmm. they just speed through that, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, but they, they do, like, these uh, animations whenever there's um, uh, a military conflict. So those kind of have, like, a set amount of time that they're going to play through anyway. So there is... Uh, Although you can move to the next... Uh well, I, I guess when it's your turn, like you, if you're engaging in combat, you can just hit the X button yeah. and like advance to the next unit. So that's happening simultaneous to you moving your next unit. The one thing I don't like, so you can quickly swap between like different units that can do actions in a turn. But mm -hmm. if you've got a city that has like completed building something, um, and mm -hmm. needs to queue something else up. You can't like just be like, I'll get back to that later and go to something else. Like you have to pick something on that, which like it's a, maybe a small inconvenience, but it's like, man, like I just or wish. It's a similar thing. Like when you, if you have like, say a unit that's defending, like the default state is that it's like, oh, you want this to like defend forever. So if you're just using that Fortified, automatic yeah. advance, uh, I wish there yeah, was I'm a like, way to, yep. Just cycle through and like confirm, like, yeah, I want this unit to like stay here. Cause there are times where I'm like, I know I have a builder unit, and it's just because I told it like 70 turns ago <laughs> to like stay at one area. Yeah. <laughs> you get used to just being able to cycle through everything that can do something, but there's other pieces you might be missing, and that can be a little frustrating yep. to have to like comb over your entire civilization. Be like, all right, who's not doing something? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. But uh, okay. Well, before we dive into like the final conversation here uh, that we're gonna have uh, with our video game buying habits and all that, uh, Randall, I know you asked me a couple weeks ago as I was talking about new Super Lucky's Tale yeah. and just gushing. You were hyping constantly. hard, dude. Yeah, and and I ended up finishing the game pretty much this week. Nice. I'm going to give a soft spoiler alert, although, again, I think this is nothing to worry about. Yeah, it's and I a think a huge selling point of the game. Yeah. Uh, and because the reason I say not, not a spoiler alert, because there's, I think I even mentioned on the podcast, like it seemed like that when I talked about it before, and this is just like a 3D platformer, and I was like putting it up there, you know, like I was, Randall was like, I want to hear what you think after you finish this game. Because yeah. I was like putting it up there with Mario Galaxy, which is, Maybe, you know, off the top of my head, at least my favorite uh, 3D platformer. Yeah. Uh, the first one. And I I got to say that might have changed. The <sighs> new Super Lucky's Tale is fucking amazing. Ooh. It is So I think I mentioned that there were six worlds in the game, but you beat the game after five worlds. Okay. And then the sixth world is Foxington. 
and you have to prove and you obviously play as a fox in this game Mm -hmm. and you have to prove that you're like you do all these challenges to be like uh, become a guardian and i think i mentioned that there's normally like i think five or six levels per world of, of the first five but uh number one the boss battle the final boss battle was amazing every boss battle beats every bowser boss battle that you could ever imagine <laughs> um but like by a lot the They're final tough, boss though. battle was the bowser ones no no the new oh, okay. super lucky's tale yeah bosses. that's what i was talking about. i was yeah. gonna say I, the bowser ones are usually a little too easy yeah. for me but this one was like it was throwing some of the you know you got the usual like all oh, the enemy comes down and does a huge ground pound and now there's a a radius coming out right. you know from around them or a giant circle that grows and you got to keep jumping but like you're on these like shifting platforms that are moving all around but anyways once you beat the game you get to go to foxington and then there's way more levels in this where there's actually like a boss rush mode or actually not boss rush. You have to beat each boss individually as like a more challenging version of the boss. Like they're throwing out like metal versions of the enemies that you can't jump on. You have to swipe them with your tail mm-hmm. and like kick them at other times. And you're on moving platforms instead of still ones. Uh, and again, there's like these almost bullet hell sections that I mentioned before. But then there's also like these crazy pla- there's like maybe I think seven or eight like hardcore platforming challenge levels that are like, you know, like the Super Mario Sunshine style, like where they take away your flood unit and you're kind of doing those extra challenging, like precise platforming levels. Like I've only done maybe three. I haven't fully completed all of Foxington yet, but this like I was already when I even before I got the Foxington, I was like, I think this game might outshine Super Mario Galaxy. I got here. Plant the flag. It's it's better. It's for sure. This game is amazing. And and the reason I wanted to get into it is like I, I and I, I'd have to go back and play Super Mario Galaxy in all honesty. But and uh, the reason we wanted to get into this mm-hmm. and I don't know exactly when this is going to line up. But like this is a game that even though I played it on Game Pass, I'm going to want to pick this up physically. Nice. Like, as like I said, it's one of my favorite games. Nice. I don't know what platform I would end up getting it on. Most likely switch, even though I know it. I think even on a PC, I think it runs in like 2160p or something like yeah. that. It's like 4K, some crazy baby. 4K format. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. Um, but uh, I'm just playing it on Xbox. It still looked great on Xbox yeah. One. But it's it's such an experience. Like, I know I'm going to want to relive this game again. And I'm like, I, I'm going to want to own this game physically. Because number one, I, especially because I, I did, it's not like I bought it digitally. You know, it's part of a subscription service right. that I have. Um, but obviously, I'm talking about Game Pass all the time. And on the podcast and this is probably the first one that i've said yeah i I need to own this game there's even been games that like i bought children of morta physically uh and cartridge Mm, form on switch but i then then it came out on game pass right after i bought it and honestly i I played it there because i heard it was kind of had some issues when it first came out on switch yeah and now that i've played it i'm like i don't even know if i need to own this game so i'm I'm thinking about maybe getting rid of that cartridge so like I guess kind of just rolling into that, like I'll just end the Super Lucky's Tale by just saying new Super Lucky's Tale. If you like 3D platformers, this is hands down the best, the best indie version of it by far. I mean, there's not even a close contest. That's fantastic. Um, But I think it it holds up above even the best of the best. So, um, but yeah, I know we've kind of all talked about this a lot, kind of in our little uh, discord chat and in our hangouts and stuff. We're always kind of discussing like, why are you buying this game or why, why why are you canceling your PS plus or why, you know, we just have a bunch of different reasons, a bunch of, we all have different habits with our purchases. You know, Randall and I lean a little more collector DJ yep. and John, I, John collects a lot too, actually. I always nah, forget I, you just have a I'm shit ton of cartridges. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm, I'm kind of in between these days, but I, I've been talking a bunch here in this episode and Randall, I know we haven't had uh since we're still chipping away at monster Boy yeah. here, we've been kind of leaving you out game. here. So why don't we yeah. let you take the lead? Uh, since I think you maybe have even more specific uh, credentials than me. Yeah, I've got a lot of physical games. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have literally hundreds of physical games, and that's because I've essentially been collecting since I was, I don't know, eight, basically. Yeah. Like, I just never sold stuff. Um, Same. So mm-hmm. I, I just have this massive collection that, uh, because now retro gaming is this huge thing. Like I could never afford to, to have this collection these days, but because I got this stuff when it was out or when nobody cared about it, I, I have it now, which is great. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I lean more on the physical side, uh, you know, especially physical cartridges, um, physical cartridges to me are like forever, you know, maybe that's not actually the case. Maybe they will fail at some point, but at least in my head, physical cartridges are, are that's something that can't be taken away from me. It's always going to exist on that format, even as compared to like a CD, 
Um, there's things that, you know, other, other folks will talk about online, like they have these CDs with little holes in them because of bit rot or, you know, disc rot that happens uh, over time uh, on a disc that, that doesn't typically happen on a cartridge. So yeah, yeah. I had that happen on the copy. Uh, DJ for uh, one of my previous birthdays got me a copy of WWE 2K17 and uh, I was not able to play it because it had like some chips in the middle of the disc. I wouldn't boot up. That's a big oh. loss. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, I actually I love uh, WWF No Mercy, so I'm I'm not talking trash about wrestling games in general. Just the the later games have not been quite as good, uh, especially the most recent one, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> twenty or whatever. I know that was just an abomination. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm a huge fan of physical. I still buy a lot of like say limited runs releases where not only are they trying to make sure that they've got the most updated patched version that they're stamping on a, on a cartridge, but they're also typically providing you a manual to go along with your physical box. And I'm just, I'm a huge sucker for that. You know, that's just something I'll have forever, but of course there's, there's downsides too. It's costly. You know, you'll probably spend at least 30, if not $40 for said physical copy, as opposed to maybe it's on sale for the eShop and it's half off for seven fifty. you know, that, that type of stuff right. happens a lot. So it's, not an easy sell that way, but, you know, I, I kind of prioritize it for that reason, just because I, I like to have the physical ownership. It can't be taken away from me or the system. If it dies, I can get another one and still play my games down the road. That's just kind of where yeah. I stand with it. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, I think I lean a little more like I'm half and half. Like, I, I definitely want to have the retro cartridges. And I I've, I've think I've mentioned kind of whittling down or wanting to whittle down my collection to be like, I want to just have the games I'm really going to play or like the real classics. Yeah. Like, I don't need to have every game that's ever been mentioned as a decent Super Nintendo game. Right. Um, but like when it comes to the newer stuff, I think what really changed my habits was when I started playing stuff like enter the gungeon and Downwell and these roguelikes that I was like, there's just a certain type or a rocket league even where I was like, I, I think that was one of the first where I was like, man, I, I don't usually buy a digital game. That's more than 15 bucks. I always like just had a weird like thing of like 20 is kind of pricey for a digital download. Sure. Um, but rocket league was 20 bucks. And I was like, I, I yeah. just want to be able to fire this game up whenever I want. Easily I, don't need worth to, it. I know it's such a lazy thing to say, but like, I don't want to have to pop in the cartridge. No, it's worth um, something. It and is. it's, but it, it, there's, that's actually, it's worth a ton to me. Cause yeah. like I said, there's even games, like I said, Children of Morta that I bought the cartridge. And once I played it on Game Pass, I was like, man, I, I mean, it might leave Game Pass eventually, but yep. for what it's worth, if I'm able to finish it and get everything I want out of that game, it's like, I don't, I'm probably not going to play this again. There's going to be a constant stream of new indie games I want to check out and yep. this and that. So like, I, I've just kind of, it just kind of depends on the game for me when it comes to the new stuff. But like, yeah, when it comes to like if it's a full retail game or the new Mario game, you know, yep. I'm probably going to get the physical copy. Although yep. I got to say, I, I think I'm going to skip the Mario uh, three pack, at least the <laughs> 3D All Stars collection, because I'm not a big 64 fan. Mario, so, like it's just another cash grab. I have all the I have the cartridges. I have the games. They're not upgrading them enough for me. I, I just yep. am not really that interested in this particular package. That's fair. I'll probably I've get already 3D pre-ordered World. it. <laughs> I'll probably get 3D World because they're adding that extra like Bowser zone. I know. I, are you still on the, you getting the deals on the pre-order still? Uh, I'm not at this point. No. Okay. Hey, you're, if you're going all in 60 bucks. Uh, yeah. Hey, I can't I, blame you. I mean, I, I there was a time in my I life I, I couldn't even believe that I wasn't going to do that. So. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I, I was going to say like on, on that specifically, like I, I think I've uh, weaned down my collection of physical purchases uh, in, as of late. I, I'm, m- I'm much more likely to buy a digital copy of a game or I w- especially in, you know, Steam sales mm-hmm. or in the Epic Store. Like, yeah. Since, yeah. I, since like starting Dauntless, I now have an Epic Store account and they're just offering a free game basically every week. Yeah. And, I'm just logging into it and claiming that I haven't bought a single thing on the Epic Game Store, but I have already a small library that I'm building. That's awesome. Same with that Itchio, like uh, with the like bundle for racial justice. Like, yeah, I now have hundreds of games in a library that I just have access to. And, you know, I'm not as shy of buying a digital copy of a game that I used to be like, I used to be more on, you know, Randall side of things where I would have to get a physical copy of a game that like, you know, I wanted to own and I wanted to make sure that I had a version of that. Yeah. And yeah, 
even with like you know the like specifically that 3d uh all stars for mario that collection i own all those games yep i don't <laughs> necessarily need to buy something that's not you know a there's not an expanded like version of anything like honestly i like if it was more like of a i don't know where you you're splitting hairs over the term of like a remake versus a remaster right. or whatever yeah. like if it was something more where you know it was like hey we've completely remade this game and like rebuilt it in like say the odyssey engine and all three of the yeah. games look completely different that's something i would i 100 yep. percent i'd just be pre-ordered I'd, it would be pre-ordered right now for yep. sure because one of my things is mario 64 the controls like dj and i a long time ago did a thing where we were like i don't think we ever got all the way through but we're like we're gonna play through all the mario games i think it was after we did the Mega Man games and we didn't get far um, and, we, and <laughs> i think we only got through mario 64 like as soon as we played that we we're like yeah that game kind of sucks <laughs> i mean yeah, that's careful. A, that's, a, careful. that's, that's so extreme Careful. that's so extreme but it, it just feels so clunky after you've played stuff like galaxy sure. and odyssey which i don't even love odyssey that much but just the way it feels to control mario it, it's really hard to go back at least just like it is for me to go back to the original uh super mario brothers the first one on nes right i i will say too like a lot of the the games released in like the racial justice bundle or on epic are, are indie games and it's you know yeah. a lot of these games will never get physical releases so you know, you don't want that to hold you back from having a shared experience, especially with others while others are playing said game, you know, and, you know, that's a big factor, too. And I, I will say, you know, I'm a huge advocate for physical, but like on Xbox One, I have no physical games. I've only bought digital and then had Game Pass, and I'm completely comfortable with that. And and part of that's because, like, in that instance, Microsoft has shown me enough that they're they're moving forward with, the, you know having the, you know, compatibility with original Xbox and 360 and into the future where I'm like, okay, I can buy this on sale digitally and have a decent confidence that I'll still have access to these games into the future. The Microsoft store is not going anywhere. In theory, (laughs) yeah, you know, and that's still a risk, but, you know, I feel a little bit more confident that that would be the case. Yeah, and since we're leaning in the digital direction, I know DJ, you kind of tend to to lean more that way. So, what are what's your kind of thoughts on all this stuff? Yeah, I'm looking over at my physical game collection. I think there's like five games. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know I own a couple of yours that you are pre, you know your yeah. previously owned games. Just take more. Uh, <laughs> I, well, I think it's maybe a little different for me. I think I probably replay games uh, less than the rest of you. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think I'm, I mean, part of it just being like, you know, uh, I've played it. I don't, I don't need to play it again, but also like, I've got like all the other games in my backlog I need to get to. Why I can't go back to an old game. I got some games to check off. Um, Mm -hmm. I think there's an element too, where like I, uh, right now I'm in my seventh apartment in the past nine years so i've done a yeah, lot of dang. moving <laughs> that yeah. is uh, yeah. made yeah. me really like generally be pretty minimalistic and that has you know caused me to get rid of like a lot of i you know during that time i'd gotten rid of like my n64 something like if you had told me like yeah like nine years ago that i would do that one day i wouldn't believe you but it's just yeah it just gets to that point yeah. where, you know, like, I don't know, like, what what value am I getting out of it just hanging on to these things um, yeah. when there's theoretically, like, I could just give this or give or sell to someone who would appreciate it more than I currently am. So, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I totally get that there's, like, you know, some sentimental value to, like, having that physical copy um but i don't know i i just i think i've at this point like succumbed to such a minimalism that like i can't even i can't justify it i mean like and back to like the replaying games i can only like think of like a couple games where i would like rebuy like i did dark souls remastered i mean that's because yeah. I had gotten yeah. rid of my PS3, so I didn't have access to that game anymore. So Right. Uh, and, I mean, similar will be for, you know, when the PS5 comes out. 
Demon Souls remastered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so totally. Fucking pumped for that. Totally. <laughs> but they're, like, I mean, they're like kind of remake, like not remaking, but I mean, they're kind of full remastering that, right? I mean, it's going to look much, much improved. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because that was an early PS3 game, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Demon Souls. Yeah. I, did I play that on your Xbox? I can't remember. But yeah, it was. It was. I, I don't think so. It was, maybe. Ba- it was back when we were living together. That, I want to yeah. say that guy was PS3 only, but I'm not. I positive. think it was. Yeah, oh, okay. I think it was. My bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's. You know, physical copies. I I I wonder how long they will be a thing. Yeah, honestly, I think yeah. I, good question. I I agree with you, but I think it's kind of like I think the stuff like Randall's talked about, like limited run, and some of these. Uh, I know there's a handful of others as well that yeah. do similar, like FDG and that yep. do like the Monster Boy. I love Strictly that manual. Like that's such a nice little package. Yep. And uh, it's I think it's gonna kind of maybe turn into the kind of vinyl type niche yeah. for music. You know, I Definitely. think it's gonna be something like that. But like uh, just real quick, another thing like you're talking about, like the wanting to be part of the conversation you mentioned, Randall, and that's kind of a bummer sometimes waiting for those physical copies because like the game's out. But like how long did we mention Risk of Rain 2? And you're like, I'm still waiting on my copy. I'm still we're just like, I'm loving Oh, new update, new update. But I mean, it's still awesome to have, but it's also like. I, I get it. Like I see with whenever I see the posts of like a new limited run release, I'm just like, ah, fuck. Especially if it's a game I already own. Like I just saw the Sayonara Wild Hearts oh, yeah. one the other day. I'm like, I need that. I need that. Like, but I already bought it. I don't really need it at all. But yeah. like, I want it. But because they all look cool. So like, I it's really hard. I'm really torn if I if I'm honest with myself. But I'm I'm able to finally kind of at least turn the switch off and and walk away. I mean, they, I feel they like definitely. It, it, sorry, go on. No, no. I, I'd say like. I definitely feel like I'm a little bit healthier about that, too, where before I was getting practically everything for a while, but I was also, yeah. you know, in a better financial situation. Than, say, yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, the, the other thing that I would say is I still lean in, especially if it's something I know I already super love or if it's something with any kind of license associated with it, because then you get into a license hell situation where that thing might never release in any way regardless but if you own it off physically, store, they like, can't pull it back away from you ever, and you still have right. access to it. You know? Yeah, I was just going to say get pulled off a store like Scott Pilgrim yeah. style or whatever. Yes. Yeah, or TMNT. I know there were a couple Turtles games Duck that Tales, got pulled, like, too. There's a lot of examples of that that have happened. Yeah, and what were you going to say, Deej? I was going to say, uh, you know, I like going over to your place and like seeing your collection of games. They They almost serve better as like decorative, I think, at this point. It is, especially, I mean, when they go all out and give you a little poster or a little, like, I bought, like, I don't know, just little, like, the end is nigh comes with, like, a tiny little goop figure of the main character. Oh, yeah. Just stupid little things. Oh, I got a little tiny barbarian pouch. I I got my metal case for bloodstained ritual. See, now that's kind of cool, though. I'm a sucker for those little It doesn't fit in any shelf, though. It's not the same (laughs) size as a, like, Switch box. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, it's just like a regular like DVD size case. Kind of, but like it still has like the internal like plastic case that you can oh. put the switch cartridge in. It's, <laughs> uh, it's just a weird thing. That's funny. Yeah. Oh man. But uh yeah, I think we can pretty much wrap up the games talk this week unless anybody else wanted to uh dive deeper into their collecting and game buying. Oh no, habits, I, I can talk about that again more later. And I probably Yeah, will. I'm sure we will because we've <laughs> we've obviously touched on it a number oh, of times. Yeah. yeah. We've always danced around this and we're like, why don't we just always dig into thing. it a little bit this week? Yep. Yeah. So uh yeah, um I think we can wrap it up there this week. And uh, as always you can find the uh, notes and whatnot in the episode description, links and everything. We've got Discord, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Um pursuingpixels.com. I think I forgot to mention that last week. I didn't say the website but uh (laughs) anyways yeah you can find us online all the links are in the episode description timestamps and we'll catch you next week take care bye 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 oh Oh, i'm this i'm not gonna bring it up on ever on the podcast but (laughs) you know how i am still playing like kingdom of loathing like every goddamn day because it's just a part of my life are you still oh yeah i never stop how do you have time john I, I can, <laughs> that's a good question it, i don't like <laughs> so, i do it so mad <laughs> well i just like we always talk about how many hours john <laughs> puts in on like every game and we're like i don't know how if you're still playing that every day too man i don't know how you do it yeah but like <laughs>
I mean, it's a, it's a, something that I've been doing for like nearly half my life. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Is there a sunk cost fallacy happening at this point? It's a free game. I don't, yeah, yeah, no, like, I know, but <laughs> <laughs> so it's an infinite like sunk cost fallacy in that. But um, 